The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So last week I asked you, who would you lie your life down for? And if you would be able to love a stranger as the Good Shepherd loves us. This week I continue on the topic of love. In the second reading, which was John's first letter, it oozes love. Did you know that John is believed to be the apostle who Moses is referred to as the one whom Jesus loved? Therefore, I think it's safe to say if John is writing about Christ and love, there is a deep understanding of what that love is all about. John writes the word love, or a form of it, 29 times. 29 times in 14 lines. One has to believe that that word is extremely important. So what is John telling us about love? Well, the most critical statement is that right at the beginning. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. God is love. John is trying to make it very clear that God's love for us flows, it is outpouring from his character. God is good and God does good. God is love and God does love. Unfortunately, we do not always love. We are mean and we are cruel and we put conditions on our love. God's love is unconditional because love is the essence of who God is. God cannot stop loving us, which for me I find incredibly comforting. I hope you do too. But it also makes me wonder what would happen if God did stop loving? Would God stop to exist? Would we stop to exist? For now though, it's not something we really need to worry about because we do know that God exists. If you look around this church, Look at the people sitting beside you. Go outside for a walk. Take a look in the mirror. You can see the outpouring of God's love absolutely everywhere. And what's so amazing about this love is that God loves us no matter what. Even when we are at our absolute worst, in our darkest of darkest of days, God will always love us. When I was writing my sermon, I know this is really stupid, but a Taylor Swift song came into my head. Um, the song, Shake It Off. <laughs> because there's a line in it that says, a hater's gonna hate, hate, hate. That's it. 
So if somebody's a hater, no matter what, they're going to hate. You could give them all the greatness, all the positives, and no matter what, they're going to hate. And to me, that's incredibly sad and tragic. However, for us, John is telling us that we should not be haters. God, John continues to stress the truth that we are loved by God. And because we are loved by God, we must love one another as God loves us. God loved us so much that he sent us his son, who continued to demonstrate God's love by caring for and taking care of people no matter who they were, no matter where they were, no matter what their social status was, demonstrating God's deep, great love for us. And that demonstration is an invitation for us and an encouragement to demonstrate it as well. So how does this connect to our lovely gospel? Well, we heard I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Let me rephrase it for a second. I am love and you are part of that love. If you love me and love others, you will bear great love. But if you do not love, you can do nothing. If you do not love, you can do nothing. If you do not abide in me, you can do nothing. If we think about it, I'm sure there's lots we can do on our own that we can say that God didn't really help us with. And I'm sure if we think about it, there's lots of people in this world that we would really rather not love. There are hundreds and thousands of people in this world who unfortunately do not believe in God. And they do great, great things, all supposedly without Jesus in their lives and all supposedly not knowing the love of God. So how are we different from them? A quote from John Knox comes to mind. Faith is not a blind leap into the unknown, but a confident trust in God's promise and love. Therefore, the simple truth today, us as followers, we are nothing without God. And if we do not have God, we do not have love. We must abide in God. We must accept the Lord into our lives. How do we do that? Well, simple. Daily prayer, scripture, weekly worship, spending time with others. Daily prayer, as you know, is just a simple conversation with the Lord whether it be at morning, lunchtime, at night. It's where you get to sit in the presence of the Lord and just say, thank you. Spending time in God's words, the words that feed us and feed our souls. It is the bread that we eat, the nourishment that we need. But as scripture says, we cannot eat alone by, by bread. We cannot live by bread alone. Every word that comes out of God's mouth is our nourishment. Diedrich Bonhoeffer once said, every day in which I do not penetrate more deeply into the knowledge of God's word in Holy Scripture is a lost day for me. I cannot move forward with certainty upon the firm ground of the word of God. The word of God feeds us. Workly worship. Well, it's the time where we reset ourselves spiritually with family and friends and strangers. It is our Sabbath. It is the day that we are meant to keep holy. How do we abide in God? We pay attention to the fruits of the Holy Spirit In Galatians, we are told that they are joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the indicators of a good spiritual health. They bear the fruit when we abide. We bear the fruit when we abide in Jesus. 
Love is first, obviously, because without love, nothing else is there. So it's the most important. So the question is, are you loving others as you wish to be loved? Are you loving others as you wish to be loved? Joy. Joy is not happiness. People get that confused a lot. Happiness is an outward expression. Joy comes from enduring hardships, trials, tribulations. Joy comes from when we connect with all the meaning and purpose. Joy comes from knowing that God is always with us and helping us through it. Peace that surpasses all understanding, well, that just comes from knowing God is there and really being in his presence. Patience blossoms when we are able to see Christ in others and know that there is more to the story. Everybody has a story. We all have a story. We show kindness and generosity when we can see Christ in others, whether we know the story or not. We can show kindness and generosity, whether we know the story or not. When we have faith, trust, and generosity, we can connect with Christ, and we have nothing to fear. Now, with saying all that, Jesus wants us to know that all, all of this is with him. He doesn't want us to be used as doormats, obviously. He would like us to, be, to use our patience and control ourselves occasionally, our passions, our tempers, our appetites. But he wants us to know that is not done with sheer willpower. It is done with him. It is done when we connect ourselves to him. Like a tree, we can, it, a tree cannot bear fruit on its own. It needs roots, it needs sun, it needs water, it needs nourishment. For us to bear fruit, we need love, we need hope, we need faith, we need trust, we need God. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. Everything is wrong until we allow God into our hearts. So let us glorify the blessed Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us bear as much fruit as we are called to bear. And let us be the branches that are solidly connected to Christ and love others as John reminds us to love. Amen. Let us stand together and confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven.